Welcome, everybody. Let's play some Hollywood Squares. It's another dish of Grizz on the Hot. So I uh, got information from psychic medium Kelly Joe. Her computer, I don't know if it's a brand new one, went kaput. Uh, they cannot get it up and running. Just got the message a minute ago. So we got Brian from SWYPT from Canada. How you doing, Brian? I'm doing fantastic. And how are you, my friend? Doing good. Hello, Pamela. Welcome to the show. Crazy Witch. Welcome back there. Hello, Lady Wolf. Hello, Pinky Waving. Denise, hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. So, yeah, so what's been going on here in the world, sir? Well, the, this afternoon between doing laundry and that, and I've got a, I've got a uh, group on uh, Facebook. It's called Real Ghosts Caught on Camera. And I've been working on that for the past, uh, I'd say, probably two or three hours. Really? Yeah, because uh, I cannot believe how big the, the group has grown. Like right now, I I'm at almost forty thousand members. Oh wow! And I'm trying Good to. Hello, Nigel. Welcome party. to the party, Nigel. Yes, welcome. Anthony Lewis is coming up in the rear. Hello, everybody. Hello there. Anyway, That's back. interesting. Very so, interesting. That group really has grown very big, very fast. Yeah, tell me about it. Now, I said I started good. the group only six years ago. That's real good. So yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Really interested in uh, spirit photography. Yes, they are. Uh, it's been around for ever since photographs has has been around. Photography. Oh been yeah. Around. And you know, of course, there's the ones that actually fabricated, and, and there are the oh, fake ones yeah. that are out there. I've seen them. So yeah, yeah. Does, does it actually happen still this day? Absolutely, it does. Oh yeah. So I. It does happen. Yeah, what do they usually gotta, catch that? to look for. So, Tammy, uh, I just got the message. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to see her talk to animals. Uh, her message I got uh, just a few moments ago. Oh, pardon me. It states... Uh, well, I did have it on hand. Or is that the wrong device here? Hold up. Because she sent me a message, something about, uh, let's see here. Yeah, you're awful dark again. You like working in the dark, don't you? Me? Yeah. Well, I'm, I find the light above me is, is, awfully, is, is awfully bright. Like said, uh, at times it's kind of hot. But I'll tell you what, for you. But anyway, so Messi said her computer went on the fritz, hooking it up. So I guess that's her new one. And it's down for now. So I don't know if the guy was hooking it up. But I just found out before we went live, Tammy. So, yeah, we're going to have some answers next show. Uh, I had, uh, you know, uh, Brian and I was talking about. I know things happen, but who knows, right? A lot of people <laughs> yeah. looking into what makes up a spirit and how shadow and light and pictures can, can show a ghost. Well, there's a thing called pareidolia. Yep. And a lot of people can take a, a look at something long enough and they can see images or faces into an object. Now, I'm not saying every time, ladies and gentlemen, that a person can do this and that's what they see and that's what they're calling it. Now, I've seen photographs before uh, when they've blown up orbs that are actual orbs. And we're not talking dust particles, water droplets or moistures in the air that actually resemble faces because there are supposed to be ores, there's supposed to be balls of energy and they could be spirits, right? Exactly. So, yeah, so it, it's very interesting. So what what is your take about that? Well, well you see, first of all, it's one of this, uh, I mentioned that the, the orb is the first stage of a spirit manifestation. See, first you got the, the orb stage and then when there's enough orbs, it forms the ectoplasm, and that, as that goes on, it starts showing the face of the spirit person, usually around the facial or from the um, from the lower torso up. And that, but um, a lot of people think, uh, yeah, like a lot, of, a lot of people think that the orbs are just the balls of glowing light. Well, sometimes 
that's one way they show. In other ways, they actually show them as flashy lights, like little, like little sparkles. That's another way an orb can should be shown is a little flashy light. Yeah, they are. Now, what's the difference between flashy lights, orbs, and things that go blink in the night? I mean, what what? I mean, how would you describe or tell people that? Okay, well, first of all, the orb, uh, the, the orb part, and that it's just balls of balls of en- of uh, spirit energy, and that. But unfortunately, as you said, and that that the scientific community, and that the, at times they're able to uh, debunk it because there's other scientific theories, like as you said, dust particles, insects, moisture. When the light reflects off of that, it can it can show in the form of an orb. But the one way that you can usually tell is to first of all debunk the atmosphere, and that make sure it's not too hot, not too cold, not too dry, not too wet, and that, and then to actually take the orb. And that especially if it's a colored orb and that and blow it up and that and sometimes if you can see let's say a face in the orb that's very clear you know nothing like uh, as, as Gracie was saying anything about pareidolia which is basically your mind creating the image instead of the image being in the window or the clouds or whatever you can actually see a clear face in the orb okay well the chances are that orb with the, the spirit of a small child or a person or something like that. So it's just the first stage of the spirit person showing themselves, but also building up the energy. Because, see, for a spirit person, it takes a lot of energy for them to show themselves. Well, and that's where we come up with batteries being drained, electronics filling, exactly. and so forth. Exactly. Batteries ourselves. And then, see, I see, see, when a, when a, a spirit people or a spirit person, whenever they come into the atmosphere and that they need a, they need a feeding source. Can see, a, can a mist be the scene of a ghost or are droplets? And then, see, that's the, said, you gotta, you gotta test the environment to see if you're in a damp area because it could, if it's an area that's really damp, then they, it could be dis, they could be debunked as moisture, and then so basically it depends on the environment, right? If it's hot, cold, uh, dry, moist, damp, whatever. So if it's really damp, chances are it's light reflecting off a uh, water molecule kind of idea. Now, yeah, especially with our IR lights, right? The infrared lights. It, oh. Big time, big time, and that see when I see when a spirit person comes in the atmosphere, they need a, a feeding source in order to manifest. So equipment, batteries, and because we have energy, our aura, they feed off of that. That's why some investigators, when they leave a, a location, they they feel so drained. Well, the spirit people have been using that energy to do stuff, to perform, as I, as I put it. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, that actually makes sense when you stop to think about it. It really yeah. does. You know, and unfortunately, a lot of people will go to graveyards, stuff like that, when it gets hot during the day and kind of cool at night, and you get that mist fog, and then they get a copy of that on video or camera, and they're like, oh, look what I got, you <laughs> yeah, know, and exactly. they're like, well, it's probably <laughs> atmospheric, you know, changes, and that's probably what you're, you know, picking up. Now, don't get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not saying it doesn't happen when the temperature changes. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying be careful in what you capture and don't always think you got the the holy grail in front of you. That's all. So, uh, because stuff like that freaks me out because after the show, I have to do... Hi, Yolanda. Welcome to the show. Uh, I have to actually uh, do a session with the dolls for tomorrow's show, which I am dreading. Uh, (laughs) Yes, uh, I do not want to sit here and talk to the dolls one on one, and put ghost balls in front of them, uh, and time. other electronic devices. Uh, we got one girl. I'm not going to tell you what she has done with her object. I know that it didn't sound good, but uh, yes, FDL, if you're watching, I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag. 
But uh, I was like, what? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah. I'm like, no way. And he's like, yeah. And it was like, she even did this. And I'm like, no. I'm like, man, ladies and gentlemen, look, let me tell you something. I am, I am psychologically proven insane beyond a reasonable doubt, right? Now, I will tell you, I will cross that line and I will toe and I will dance with anybody. Another of certain things that Grizzly will not entertain or do. But yes, yes, Yolanda, thank you. Hi. But there are different multiple explanations. But when people oh, yeah. do certain things that make you go, what? <laughs> no, I don't know That's about like that. Uh, I choose the third doll for you to talk with. The third one, no that is actually uh, one of the ones I'm doing tonight. So that's very interesting. I'm mad. I'm, I'm doing totally Hansel and Gretel. Uh, that's if you, Anthony, if you didn't see that show, uh, I can't remember which one. It's freaking me out just even thinking about what I'm crawling on my foot and I've out messed myself on the air. Uh, <laughs> it felt like it felt like it did. It felt like a spider. A big object crawling, and the doll's not that very big, ladies and gentlemen. If you know what yeah, answer is, right? I don't know. I see, see, welcome to the show. Yes, so it's interesting. Uh, Kelly's got some issues tonight, so we're hopefully, uh, she said she'll have everything fixed this Thursday, so that'd be great. But yeah, uh, but I don't know. I mean, haunted vessels, haunted possessed items. Uh, I talked to Michael, the head guy at FDF Air Normal, about his his box. And uh, he's like, <gasps> and I'm like, I told you. And I'm like, <laughs> why doesn't anybody ever believe me on you know, anything I ever say, right? But when it comes to people crossing over, I've actually heard people say that I have seen the spirit leaves the body upon death. Now, I could have swore... And I could have fabricated in my own head. I don't know. This has been a long time ago, many years ago, that when one of my, one of my family members has passed, I thought I saw a purple, like, mist. Yeah. But I don't know if I was fabricating that in my head or, you know, I mean, it's just a lot of things. Hello there, Joanne from Canada. Another like Canada. So, yeah, Acadian. That's right. That's how you all say it. But, yeah. Uh, but uh, it, it's, I don't know. So, what do you think about that, Brian? Well, I do uh, well, I've never had to had an experience myself, but uh, what I've um, what I've actually seen, I should say, is uh, as soon as soon as everything of you know, the physical shuts down at the time of uh, death, when the when the spirit body come um, comes out, and that. At that time, that when you know that you've left the physical body in that, and um, and that's when you, uh, like I'll give you one good example. My my mother-in-law uh, was back in 2011, and that well, I saw her come out of the physical body in that, and she looked exactly the way she did when she passed in that, and but she was really kind of like she like unfortunately she had schizophrenia and that she was really confused as to. Not as much where she was, but what what she was to do next, and that, and luckily my guide was there, which was her husband, and that, and said, okay, time for you to, uh, you know, move on this crossover, and that, and she went as soon as she saw, she go, oh, lovely, my husband's here, and that, see, but uh, the best part is that whatever physical ailments that you had in the physical, that all stays. That all stays behind. You got a clean slate of health, and that. And when it comes to the coloring, I say that your auric field, and that all that coloring, because that's that's that, that's part of your energy field. And when it leaves the physical body, all the energy, you know, you may you maintain. It doesn't stay in the physical body because that physical body eventually, you know, goes away yeah, without getting too graphic. And that, and so when you said that purpley uh, color, and that that could be part of your aura, your aura, your aura field. Well, that that is a good explanation. I've also uh, been told by family members and other people that I've spoken to and interviewed and spent time with 
before they take that journey onto the other side or the afterlife, they always say that their family members, mom, Paul, great aunt, great uncle, grandparents have always said it's almost time. We're here to take you over. What do you think about that? They, and basically, when it comes to a lot of, especially a lot of families that are very, very close, very close, like close knit families, and they know that their loved one is ready to be the physical, to go to heaven, that they actually, some of them actually come down as almost like a, almost like a, um, well, I think I'd use the term a spiritual, uh, waiting party kind of thing like you'd have a few relatives and that waiting for that person to come out of the physical body and say okay our, uh, our lovely uh relative has come out of the physical okay now we're all together again let's go up, up to heaven so basically it's kind of um like okay i'm um, kind of a, a brief uh, uh um example okay Good. You go to the airport, and that you, a flight's coming in of a, of a dear relative. The relative goes through security, comes out of the airport. You see uh, you, all your family members that, that are down by the main door, and they go, "Welcome home!" And they run up to you, give you the you know, give you a big welcome and stuff. Same idea, but in spirit. I wonder about that. So, Anthony Lewis. Brian, I wanted the ghost adventures. You know that ghosts are real. And he's asking you, are they real? I know they're real. 100%. And that, but I better point out that the, that the actual intervention with a spirit person, okay, that's a spirit. It's not a, it's not a ghost because all a ghost is is just a, a replay, residual. It's like a, uh, a, a tape playback. And that the individual that you actually encounter that you communicate with that you meet again and that you know in time and that that's the that's the actual spirit person that's the actual individual that's waiting for you you know to uh you know to um be reu be reunited and that because at time at time especially when it comes to especially when it comes to children and that when they like unfortunately they lose their when they lose their physical bodies too early, usually I get a family member like mom, dad, whatever, and that they come down and say, "Okay, your child is here waiting. Doesn't know where to go. Come and collect your child up to heaven." Because you know, because the kid says, "Oh, hey, mom and daddy, I can go now." You know, so sometimes the parents will have to come down to collect the child or children. And so basically, it's the same idea. So, Kelly, uh, you're going to make me cry. As well. <laughs> uh, she says, I used to live in a pub. It was built in the 1800s. And we had a ghost that used to repeat itself. And I used to have a lot of activity there. And every night, I used to get scared. Well, yeah, I, I get scared by anything, uh, especially things that crawl on my feet that do not belong on the ground. It's supposed to be above my head, living peacefully. Uh, I had a psychic Kelly that reached out to me uh, the other night, and it was like, "Look, we got to talk about one of your dolls. You're gonna have to separate with one of your dolls. One of your dolls is just not like you. Uh, they want to cause you harm." And I'm like, "Yeah, I wonder why. Because I'm having nightmares lately, right?" So, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna miss the psychic medium's name on the air, uh, but she did reach out to me, you know. And when they reach out to me, Lacey, I mean, I do pay attention. But what's weird, Kelly, is that uh, Kelly Joe was not able to make it. So you must have, uh, there we go. I was going to ask you, I just wanted to say to Brian, if you had pair, I was going to ask if you had a question because we were not going to do this topic. So thanks for asking the, the question. Just wanted to say to Brian, I keep having paranormal activity in the house. And one of my family members keep poking me all the time and playing knock, knock, run outside my front door. I know who it is. How the hell with that? I know what that is too. That's called Grizzly's Holy Water Time. 
Are yeah. you serious? Yeah, see, I couldn't handle yeah. stuff like that. Now, who yeah, is I, it? I, 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 know, I know who it is. And as a matter of fact, my guy has actually spoken to uh, this uh, individual and that. And when he was when he, when he was down here on the earth and that, he liked to be, he liked to be, he, he was a real prankster. And he always liked to, you know, at times, um, the term I'm getting is at times he liked to antagonize just because he, he thought it was funny. And that, well, he hasn't like, changed one bit since he came out of the physical body. He's still a real jokester. But sometimes I think he's, uh, he kind of uh, goes a little bit overboard because he has so much fun and he loves her reaction, whether she's happy or not. He goes, oh, I just love doing this. I can't, I can't stop it. Like, it's a new hobby for me, kind of, kind of idea. And yet my guys told him, come on, settle down. You know, let her sleep. You know, you can play tomorrow. It's like uh, talking to a, it's almost like talking to a child. Okay, enough play time for today. Let her sleep. And well, Kelly, that is what I call one of those grizzly moments. Dude, what? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, talking about my cousin Paul, aren't yep, you? Yeah, that's the guy. Yep. All right, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Now, the, oh, yeah, this is one of those do what <laughs> moments again. <laughs> I do not like this subject sometimes. It makes me question a lot of things. Um, I don't know. Something is telling me to get a ghost ball out. I don't even know. Do not know why I've been told to get a ghost ball out. <laughs> it's not funny, but I'm going to do it. I didn't um, know those had balls. Yeah. <laughs> there goes my YouTube thing. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I have to use tape because if I don't tape it down, they will throw them. And see if I can put this on camera number two. Let's see here. Yeah. All right, here. I had to put extra, install extra cameras in the studio because of the activity and stuff. It's so rampant. Yeah. This way people can see that things do actually happen oh yeah uh yeah so uh she calls she says uh wait a minute i clicked on the wrong thing aussie sue's laughing i how did i know aussie was gonna be laughing uh kelly says i call my house the ghost of hotel brighton there we go yeah. i wonder why you do that uh guides are great i love i knew it what did i tell you ladies and gentlemen that's why i was told to get the ghost ball out already uh, I had to bring up cat balls, but don't you have touch? <laughs> they love cat even, balls. I can't even read that, Denise. Anyways, Kelly, uh, can you ask who poked me near the uh, near the uh, wall? Uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. He he, like, he likes to poke and prod, and that because um, he he loves the re he loves your reaction. Yeah, but I think so. she's talking about a private part. Yeah, like I said, he likes to poke and pride. Whoa, okay there. Hi, Denise, uh, well, that kind of blew my mind. Uh, is well, that what we call, we, are we, like, was she sleeping when that happened, or was that, was she during the day when that happened? At nighttime, too, like in the middle, we in the wee hours in the morning. There goes Elonda right into the ditch. Uh, Brian, can you ask my cousin Paul who poked me on the knee the other day? Oh. Okay. Oh yes, she was I, there. I, she I, was I, away. I just heard a man, a mailman, uh, a, a male sparrow. I think it's Paul. Say, ah, gotcha. Ah, hello, Tiffany. Welcome to the show. Uh, that was yeah. interesting. Uh, hi, Tiffany. Austin C says, Kelly. Uh, speak to go. I was on my bed sleeping, and all of a sudden, I felt this thing poke my bum. Ladies and gentlemen, why? Why? <laughs> why? Yeah. And don't you? Uh, I, I don't know. That that ball is making me nervous sitting underneath the, the mic stand. But anyways, yes, Kelly. Yeah. So what was your reaction, Kelly? I knew it. I knew it was getting ready to go off. I didn't want to look at it. Hello, Chris. Welcome to the shows. We got flashing lights. We got people's bums being poked. We got people being touched. Crazy witch. Now, my papa passed several years ago, and he has been hanging around since my mama's been sick, and he was pranking me the other day. 
My grandfather, Crazy Witch, was a very big prankster. Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. Ossie C says, hello, I. Pigay's my friend and uh, for hide and see to Chris. Tiffany, I tell spirits not to touch me. I don't like it. Tiffany, I can say that over and over, and they still do it. No matter what I say, they still do things. But yes. Yeah, as long as you're not grabbing, leaving my hand prints. Yeah, don't. Yeah, don't. hello, crazy bitch. <laughs> Austin, see laughing. But yes, uh, yes, Chris, we're already in the ditch already. And uh, yeah. so Kelly uh, says, uh, it made me jump. I told Paul, off for it. Off for it. Yeah, you did. Stop for you it. Did, you did say, hey, Paul, take a hike. There we go. Yes, interesting. Kelly's like, oh, yes, LOL. Tiffany, you got to mean it. I do mean it. I do. It's the same. Yeah, just say to Paul, there's a door. You know where a door is? Go through it. <laughs> Go through it. Don't open the door. That was, that was ironic. But yeah, right. But it is no, interesting. Would. Uh, because, like I said, uh, now my grandfather, he did come back and play a lot of pranks on me, still up to this day. So, even for our mood studios. So, oh, yeah. uh, I had to be told who it was because I didn't know who it was. I just ignored it there for a while. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love my cousin to biz, but sometimes he's a pain in the backside. Well, I figure he's going to say something else. A bum, but anyways. My he's little nervous. fun time right there. But, uh, yeah, you know what? If, if I die before everybody else, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to play pranks on each and every one of you all. I'm going to jump up and down on your all's bed. I'm going to shake the hell out of the sheets and everything. Yeah. I'll bounce with you. Uh, Anthony, tell those spirits that mess with me at night, if it's that important, can't wait for the daytime. Chris, and yes, you're going to be one of them. You are going to be on your hands and knees begging for forgiveness. And you're going to be, be begging, what have you done in your prior lives to this, to, 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 I knew, why would you have to go off when I bring up? <laughs> and uh, so I uh, got Kelly Joe calling me. Go ahead and take over for a second, uh, Brian, when I got to see what Kelly's up to. Yeah. One thing is, is especially, especially if you've got um, spare people that are constantly coming around, they're constantly bugging you, poking pride in you, doing all kinds of silly stuff. And that you know that they're, uh, they're family, usually family members in that. And... Uh, one thing I, I would suggest you do, okay, is just like having a tenant in your home that's renting, treat them the same way. Say, okay, there's certain areas of the house you are not allowed to go into, okay? If you want to stay in the house here, okay, you must not go into a certain room, regardless of what time it is, and that, and tell them, okay, that first in the bedroom and the bathroom, stay away from those areas. Because if not, I'll get some psychic set in and have you booted. And that if you if you don't if you don't uh, abide by these rules. Cause like I said, that like any like anybody is sensitive, so you'd know what's around. And that those are two private areas that they should be off limits is the bedroom and the bathroom. And that regardless of what, hey, what? Of, why would you say bathroom? I don't want any spirits coming in when I'm uh, <clears throat> uh so ladies and gentlemen, Kelly Joe said she had uh lightning. I don't know if it hit her house or not. She's without power, and her new computer is up and running by tomorrow, so it's actually in the hands of the computer guy. So yes. <laughs> so uh, uh she just wanted to let everybody know she apologized. Uh, but uh, I never would actually even think about asking them not to come in the bathroom. The bedroom. The bed, the bed, the, 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 yeah, the bedroom is a sacred place. But so, but so is the, as they say in the UK, so is the loo. Chris, if I die and you're still alive, I'm going to wait till you're sitting on your little john. <laughs> and I'm going to play with the water faucets. Oh, and yeah. take the hell out of your curtains on your shower. Your shower yeah. curtains. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. Be prepared. because it, it is going to happen. You. 
<laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but you know, a lot of people uh, disregard small hintel notices of, of messages from loved ones. They move objects in the house. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can put something down like I do and turn around and go to grab it and it's gone. Like the other day, I went to reach for my holy water, which I have one bottle always to my right on the edge of my studio desk. Yeah. And, uh, and I went during the show, somebody asked about my holy water. I went to grab it and it was gone. So I got touched. That's why I got loud. So anyways, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And they're like, what do you mean it's gone? I'm like, it never moves. It was all the way across the studio on top of another filing cabinet, which I never move it. Now, I got 14 bottles I counted up to my right at, at yeah. 2 o'clock on one of my shelves. <laughs> but anyway, I feel stay electricity. And you're all crazy. You know that? You all really enjoy this. Hello, Luna. Welcome to the show. Now, Yolanda, cheap thrill scoring the wow out of Chris. Yeah, see, there you go, Chris. Tiffany, the last thing I was, uh, I was, I had was a bottle shaking on its own, on my own table. I picked it up and it was normal, put it down and kept shaking, picked it up again. It was like, okay, have fun with that and left it. And there goes that ball again. It is like nonstop. So, you know what? Anyways, I'm not, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> They, they, uh, actually, I had to uh, rearrange the dolls because uh, it uh, because uh, one of them would not quit bending over. I know that sounds funny, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> but the ones with wings kept bending over, looking down at me, and it, it kind of freaked me out. So I thought it was the stand it was on. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah, so I would straighten it and put it, put it back up. And then I would prop it between Grandma and Papa dolls. And during the show, I would look up and it would be bent down over looking at me. <laughs> so I actually took the doll and, and turned it into a pretzel. And <laughs> I know it's awful saying that. I know y'all got some bad imagery right there. But I took the doll and bent it like a U. And I'm like, okay, now bend over. So, and that didn't sound good still. But anyways, <laughs> and so I actually had to put it against the wall, and I was going to tape it there, but I didn't. Uh, yeah, that would scare a normal person for me. Yeah, I would me too. Uh, Kelly, ask Brian, just Paul have a message for me? I, I just asked my, I just, does he have a... Um... I don't know why he did it. All I'm getting from him is, uh, uh, Kelly, why are you, why are you being such a stick, a stick in the mud? Uh oh. I have no idea what that was. That, no, that, that, I think it's because he wants to play and she doesn't. And that, but uh, no, he he just enjoying what he did in life. Now he, he gets to continue with it and that. But um, if he ever does come forward to, uh, you know, with, with a message, uh, either I would give it or Derek would give it. But, uh, um, yeah, he just, uh, he just loves to do and just love to play around. Yeah, and I'm doing good, Andy. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, you never know what the afterlife or spirits or family members or whoever's going to do or what they're going to do. Uh, you know, I mean, come on, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, imagine sitting there for eternity. You got to get bored. So, you know, what are you going to do in your bored time? You're going to have a little fun. But you know what? Stay by, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back after this commercial.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Grizzlies on the Hunt. We got Brian, psychic medium from Canada. And this edition is brought to you by Western Kentucky Bigfoot and Paranormal Investigations, LLC, Mr. Don Wyden himself. Thank you, sir. Chris, yes, it would most definitely be what be boring. So, yes, I would definitely have fun. Absolutely. Tiffany. Now, that would scare a normal person for me. I was like, well, okay, then, yeah, move the bottle by. Yeah. I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like, what? But yes, uh, Kelly, ask Brian to have Paul. Uh, we already, uh, so I'm, I'm way behind. Uh, Chris, I knew you were going to moon me. I kind of got to say, hello, Lauren. Welcome to the show. Uh, it's my birthday. Please ask Paul if there's a message for me. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lauren. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, well, happy birthday there. So uh, she wants to know, does Paul have a message for her? Okay. Um, well, I'm... Uh, It's time to it's time to put on your foot. Can you say it a little clear, sorry. Oh, okay. Put on the I don't know why he's put that terminal like this. Put on your best duds. Go on go out and just live a live a little and just have have, have some fun for a change. And that God knows you deserve it. Wow, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I didn't. I, 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 I know it's extremely brief, but that, that's all you had to say to me in that. So, um, yeah, there, there is, there is a, um, there is a little girl from Victorian times. Uh, I don't think it's in your house. I think there was a house there before, but. Uh, I'm not really convinced if that's an actual uh, spirit person or if it's just residual. I'm not 100 sure on that. Oh, beautiful! Hey, yeah, do, do something. Do something that will enjoy yourself. Wow, so well, that's then, interesting. Enjoy, enjoy yourself and that, and oh, and, yeah, little, little girl, yeah. And um, at times, whenever you if you say, "Oh, Paul, you, you should see this," or "Oh, Paul, I didn't know that," don't be afraid to do that. If you want to still acknowledge him, his energy, and that you know, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, we shouldn't just say, you know, "Oh, Paul, I didn't know that." Oh, Paul, I'm glad you're here to experience it, experience this with me. Yeah, so. That's interesting. Uh, it, 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 it makes it more personalized. Well, that's interesting. Anthony Lewis, Brian, do you ever send your guy to check up on someone or maybe spy uh, on someone? I have that. Well, I did. Well, I did so with my mother in law because she, I live in Miss Saga. She lived up in Shelburne, which is a, a two or three hour drive. And that, and, um, how do you clear up on, on spirit guides, like finding them? Okay, uh, the way I got my guide, okay, was through meditation. Okay, like, uh, like, oh, it's like going into prayer state and that being completely open to spirit, uh, through meditation, sending out thoughts, you know, to the angelic love. Okay, that's when you can actually be hooked up with your spirit guide. Okay, they'll come, they'll come, they'll come forward and that. And introduce themselves to you. How they do it is up to depends on on yourself, and that. But over time, you get to know them a little bit more, a little bit more, and that. But you always know because you always have a almost like a almost like a a, a parental kind of feeling, like someone that is looking out for you, there's someone that's caring for you, and that. And uh, so yeah, through meditation, try that, and that. And that meditation, I would recommend 
first thing in the morning. And that way you're fully spiritually energized for the day. Kelly was speaking to her daughter a few days ago and said that Paul has not been able to visit her for a long time. You know why that is, uh, Brian? Where's that? I'm trying to find where, where that question is. It's actually on the screen. Oh, okay. I wonder that. that I, I, I wonder if there could have been a little bit of. Um, well, I wonder if there could have been a, a little bit of misunderstanding or a little bit of friction between Paul and your daughter. Because I'm getting a little bit of fr a friction for some, for some reason. I, I don't know. Oh, oh that. Oh. This guy. What is up with that guy? I have no idea what. I don't, I don't even think that teddy bear has a name. My, my, my wife does all the naming. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, well, that, well, that's good. And that. You see if uh yeah let's see we well, see uh, we see that there, there it is right there Tiffany that when you do um when you do meditation you are open okay you get information uh, via thoughts images whatever okay that's that's from spirit and that but now it's just a question of being being introduced if you haven't already introduced with your guide and that and the best part i find the best part about being united with your guide is not only where where he or she is from on that like what time frame their name uh all all that wonderful stuff and that now it doesn't come overnight okay it's a lifelong journey and that but um over time and that it becomes almost like a Almost, almost like a family reunion in, in, a, in a in a way how to focus on it and that's that, that's my thing and that like i said keep uh, keep um you know keep, uh, keep on uh the meditation and that and also uh i don't know if you have, have you done this and that is to do a personal cleansing you know like pushing all negative energy out I find that help that that helps uh, as well. Starting from the top with pure white angelic light, pushing it very down slowly, right down through your body, right through your feet, into the ground. That way you're cleansed of any negative energy and that and you're grounded. And that and that way you think, ah, oh, I feel so energized. And uh, so just keep pra keep practicing that because even I have uh, bummers, <laughs> bummer days myself. Right. Uh, but it's Kelly funny. wants to know, and they're at the ball, just want to know, Brian, what do you know about anything about my paranormal gifts? Because I'm not sure. I would say, well, you're definitely, well, to me, you're definitely, uh, I'd say you're um, either an empath or a natural empath. And that plus, um, I think I also your uh, I, I think it's, you said you did okay Kelly you said that you you hear spirit okay well that's clairaudient where if you see it that's clair, clairvoyant and then now if you hear it that's clairaudient that means uh, yeah clairaudient that means that you're empath you're also a medium but you're clairaudient you hear stuff and that it's just a question of Pardon me, controlling that, like, um, uh, like if like if spirit knows that you hear them, they're gonna think, oh, we're gonna talk to her all the time. No, no, yeah. but that's something you need to le learn more about is how to um, harness or control the gift. That makes a lot of sense. Yes, that does. Hey, crazy witch. 
And then, uh, what about if you when you feel a spirit is around? Like I feel one. I feel multiple around me right now. I can hear it right now. Uh, Lauren wants to know what 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 about when you feel when a spirit's around? Well, if you feel well, if you feel a spirit around, you you see is that they come close enough, you'll kind of know, um, you know, who it could be. And that, but more, but most of all, you'll know if it's male or female, if it's uh, you know nice or not nice. Usually, if they come really close to you, that means that it's usually it's usually a family member coming into the atmosphere just to come down and see how you're doing, and that. And now, if they if they try if they try to um, oh, what if you can see and hear them? Okay, that's clairvoyant and clairaudient. Okay, that okay okay that that would mean that you have a, a medium um, ability, and that and they know that, and that it's just a question of get, again to getting to know how to harness how to control your gifts setting rules and uh stuff like that that way they're not bugging you 24 7 and that but uh it's just a question of control more than anything else now when it comes to the spirit that's close to you and that if you feel a, a brushing on the cheek and that that means that they're really they're close to you they're just basically letting you know that you're there but if you feel something on top of your head okay that's uh, probably giving you a tender loving kiss Say okay, everything's said just fine. That's usually the way they they approach. Or what they might do is touch you on the arm, but very very gently, very almost like um, a motherly kind of idea. And that, question I, another question. Every time I go to the cemetery to visit my family, my nose uh, scared energy uh, is super itchy for days and won't stop until I leave. Yep, spirit energy. Because they know about them that uh, Kelly is sensitive to them, and that and she knows that that that's a, a sensitive spot for her. So what what's the best thing to get, get to uh, Kelly's attention? Tickle, 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 tickle. That's interesting. I'm gonna stop. Yeah, I've been sneezing all the time. So people are in the in the chat saying they hear their names being called all the time. They don't know who or what is calling their names. Is it spirit guides or what is it? Relatives. Relatives, you're clairvoyant, okay? So you see it, and uh, interesting. Yep, yeah, yeah, is it like I said, meditation and that? And once you introduce to your guide, your guide will tell the spirit people, okay, uh, you want to communicate uh, with me? Okay, well, here's some rules that you have to go by because uh, you know, in the spirit world, there's no sleep, there's no time. We're down here is the opposite. And that That makes sense. Uh, Kelly says, last year I was upstairs in the bathroom and one was calling my name. Do you know who that was, Brian? Uh, um, Probably an aunt or a a grandma, grandmother or great-grandmother or something like that. Because I, I feel in Kelly's case, it's definitely got to it's, it's got to be you know uh, family related. And I can say, you see, down here we only have just a with. Let's see, uh, let's see. That's by will hug me with some the same message. Yeah, you see, and that, you see, it's a parental kind of thing. It's a, they they give you a hug. They, oh, we love you and we, we care for you. And that, so it's a good thing. Just uh, as long as they, okay, your second grandmother, because, okay, see, it's related. Can okay, you see what comes to your great grandma? Your second grandma, you see, they know how gifted you are, where down here, we're limited on how much we know. See, here, down here, like everybody knows, but we, we only see the short the short term. Uh, the short term thing. Okay. We don't know what's gonna to happen tomorrow. We're not we don't know what's gonna happen next year. Okay. We're very limited. We're in the world of spirit, it's the opposite. They can see the full picture. Okay, they can see what's gonna to happen to us and that, but they're in the spiritual law, 
they're not really allowed to tell us what's going to happen us down the road. Like we have something that's known as, is known as free will, and that and it's up to us to make the right decisions. But they can guide guide us to where we, you know, need, need to be. So by relying on them and that, hopefully make the right choices, make, make the right choices in life, and so that um, of what they see and that we'll actually do. But it's not always, it's not always, not always an easy thing to do. <laughs> Right. No, it is. It's very different. And each and everybody with abilities are, you oh, know, exactly. do different things so, as well. Yeah. You know, I've gone off the spiritual path around myself and then my my guides gave me a, a, t- a spiritual tongue lashing and said, Brian, smarten up. Yeah. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, from coast to coast and from Canada, that's a wrap. Hopefully uh, next week. Uh, we'll get right back on track. Thanks, Brian, for tuning in on very, anytime, very short Brian, notice. Anytime. So it was very interesting. Hopefully some people got some answers and some closures. And uh, Bless them I'm all. dreading what I'm getting ready to do with these dolls, <laughs> but it's got to be done. So <laughs> that's what we're working on. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, the, the <laughs> defined fun, right? But we love you, ladies and gentlemen. Godspeed. We'll see you on the next show. Take care. Bless everybody. Bye.